Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Sonic Academy. My name is Sammy and we're going to take a look at Sugarbytes WoW 2. This is a really neat little plugin. It can do quite a few different things. And I'm going to break this down into two parts. We're going to look at the filter section and then we're going to look at modulation. So we're going to go through different parts of the music here and I'm going to show you the filters first and foremost. So let's start with this. This is a combination of bass and pad. And uh, We'll open this up here to get a gist of what's on offer. So you got your high pass, low pass, band pass, and then you got some special modes. So let's start with the familiar low pass mode. The display here shows you what's going on with the filters. You can see we get to a certain point and the frequencies drop off. So what's happening is low frequencies are allowed to pass through the plugin, whereas higher frequencies are attenuated or cut off and if we bring this down we let only the lowest bass parts come through and then we open it up again we get more or less the full spectrum though if I turn this off you'll notice it is actually brighter without it so even though this fully open you are still getting some attenuation of the high end which is normal for filter plugins now the resonance uh, you just need to imagine this little peak right here at the cutoff point a little band of audio right where we are cutting off the high end. So this is a very familiar filter sweep sound. Now the different filter types available are just different models so they're based on different filter types in terms of the shape of the filter. So, for example, this one here is Sugarbyte's own design. This one's based on the Moog. This is a diode filter. This was actually oversampled. So, what that means is you may find it to be of a higher quality. But they all have their own characteristics. Um, the pole setting here is how steep the cutoff is. So, if we are on a two pole filter, the high end isn't going to be attenuated quite as much as a steeper pole, so let's just play that. I'm going to go through some higher poles in a second. Let me just take the resonance down. And turn this up a little bit. Now listen to the high end as I flip through here. Seems to emphasize the bass a lot more. I'll come to the sat in a second. Let's go to 8 pole. So this really steeply chops off the high end. So you see these sat modes here. The saturation modes uh, affect how the gain staging works. So if I turn up the resonance on this 4 pole mode, I want you to listen to the bass as I bring it down to zero. What's happening is as we increase the resonance, we're losing gain. And this is something you find on many filters. The sat mode keeps the gain level. So we can add resonance without losing volume. So that's really the only difference. Now, if we go to high pass, we've got a reverse situation what we had a minute ago. Low frequencies are being cut out uh, quite gently in the two pole, and high frequencies are allowed to pass. And it's a lot more obvious with resonance. Without, you don't get quite as much emphasis around the cutoff point. And again, we have a uh, saturation mode, and we have a steeper four pole setting here. This is great on plucks, um, drum loops, anything you want to high pass especially as an effect. And the band pass is sort of like a mix of the low and high pass. High frequencies are attenuated as are low and just the center band is allowed to pass audio. And the resonance affects how tight this band is. This is fairly wide. If we bring it down here, it's extremely narrow. And these are the different modes. Now, 
The special modes here are, uh, well, they differ from mode to mode. If you look at this, this is a mid boost. It's a fairly wide boost. Whereas the peak is narrower, but it's a similar thing. Notch just takes a band and cuts it right out of the audio. If you sweep a notch filter, it tends to sound like phasers. As does band reject, but this is a bit wider. And I think this is wider again, and it may be boosting a little bit here, I'm not sure. Now, comb filters are very interesting. They're basically delays, and you tune the delay with the cutoff. If I move this around, it sounds like a, a warble from a cassette tape. Now, if you increase the resonance, what you're doing is increasing the feedback of these delay lines. So you get this tube-like sound. Very interesting when we combine it with the distortion. Before we get to the distortion, just want to activate this mouth mode right here. Basically, uh, you get a selection of vowels on the left and on the right. And if you move it to the left, you get this vowel. And as you move it to the right, it will transform into this vowel. So it's a vowel filter, and higher resonances will bring out the vowel sound a bit better. Especially if we go to something like uh, bandpass. Let's increase the resonance. You can hear that talking vowel sound. And we can just change these here. So, let's move on from this sound because we've had enough of it. Let's go to some drums. I'm going to start to show you the modulation section. So, we're going to look at this plugin and find our way around a little bit. Let me first turn this down. Because we're going to flip through some presets, probably going to be quite loud. So, we can hit this to go through various presets. Let me turn it on. And the presets are also in these folders here. They're divided up. This is a pretty good one, by the way. Now, if we want to randomize some settings, we can just hit this button here. Wherever you see this in the plugin, it's a randomized setting. And what it's doing is just picking out a random preset. Now if we hit this, we'll get a random preset. Wherever you see this button on the plugin, it's a randomize. If we just go to this clean slate here, this sheet of paper, it brings us a totally initialized, nothing's going on setting. Let me turn this up again. So, with the modulation, I'm going to create uh, an effect similar to compression. First, we're going to use this here, which is the envelope follower. And that's accessed by clicking here, but it comes up by default. Other modulation modes are hidden in these tabs. We'll come to those in a minute. So if you notice down the bottom here, we've got some um, modulation destinations. So let me start by bringing the cutoff down. I'm going to increase the gain. Now, this is listening to the input. It's listening to this drum plugin. Now, I've set it to bring the cutoff down every time it receives a signal. How fast it reacts, I can control with the attacks. This is actually a fast attack. This is a much slower, more gradual attack. Uh, it's too slow to really be effective on this setting. And this is the decay. So that, that much is pretty much like a synthesizer. And this is like the sidechain listen on a compressor plugin. If I move this up, it's going to hear high frequencies. If I move this down, it's going to hear low frequencies, which in this case is what we want because we're listening to the kick. Every time the kick comes in, I want it to do something. I want it to generate the envelope, which I'm going to then use to modulate some control up here. So if I want to turn this off, I can just drag it all the way to the left to listen to the entire signal. But the strongest thing it's going to hear is still the kick. Nevertheless, I'm just going to bring that back. It cleans it up quite a lot. So let's not modulate the cutoff down. Let's modulate it up. Let's turn this off and see what happens. We get a much stronger signal come through. And shorten the decay here. You can really hear this now. Lengthen it. I'm going to lengthen it. 
let's also bring the attack back a little. Now, so far I've got the source for input. If I set this, it's going to listen to the output, uh, which means it's going to be further affected by what other settings we have here. But I'm just going to leave it at input for now. So let's do something useful with this and bring in some distortion. This is parabolic. You can see it's quite mid-rangey. And it's, uh, I guess, roughly based on a tube kind of distortion. This is hyperbolic. This is going to be much more aggressive, so I'm going to back off a little bit. You can just think of this as like even harder, more aggressive distortion. And I'm going to back off a lot for diabolic because this is really rough. That's pretty mad. Let me just turn this down a bit more. It's total annihilation. And let's go down to sine. This generates a sine wave based on the input and then use that as a wave shaper. That's a pretty awesome setting because it tends to retain a lot of the bass. It's thunderous. We have a dry wet mix here. So we've just introduced this massive low end. If I take this out and put it back in. Off, on again. So that's pretty awesome. And then we go to our one bit. This is just complete sonic destruction. And we've got crush. Now you're gonna lose the signal with this one quite easily because you're just reducing the bit rate so much at this point. But if we come back a little bit and get this sort of 8 bit, 12 bit distortion mode. And digitize, which is a uh, sample and hold frequency reduction. Now, I want to point out that this can be before the filter, which is the default, or after the filter. If we put this effect after the filter, it can drastically change how everything sounds. we've got a drastically different sound. This actually is filtering out the distortion now, whereas if it's after the filter, this is filtering out the audio before it goes into the distortion. Let's tone that back a bit. So just be aware that you've got two drastically different settings before the filter, after the filter. Before the filter, as I was saying, is going to take the raw audio and shape it through the distortion. After the filter is going to be taking the modified audio, which is modified by whatever uh, setting we've got here, and the resonance and uh, the valve filter, and then it's going to be distorting that. Okay, so let's just go back to uh, basic setting here and I want to show you how to set this up as a compressor just to give some practical example and it's actually pretty interesting and quite effective so I'm gonna press play we've got our signals again I'm gonna use it to modulate the drive I'm gonna turn hyperbolic up say midway and I'm gonna tell it to decrease this when we get a signal It's creating a great pumping effect. Let's do that on the volume. So what's awesome is you can see the modulation taking place because these little displays are showing us. Let's bring our frequency range back so we just hear the kicks. Now the kick is effectively modulating the volume and the distortion. Pretty drastic. Let's go for something a bit more fun. 
Let's remind ourselves where we started. So some pretty awesome things you can do there for drums and I mean just the distortion section alone is great but once you start to modulate it uh, things really get interesting.